Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me um, on this webinar on buying a home in the Netherlands and not just a um, well existing build, but a new build, a pre-construction property in the Netherlands. So who am I? <laughs> well, you see my picture on the screen and hopefully you can see my video and you can hear my audio. Um, I am an expat buying manager at Expat Housing Network. I am from the Netherlands, born and raised, but I've lived in the US for a couple of years um, when I was well around, let's say, 11 to, to my 15th, um, 11 to 14th, uh, three and a half years. Um, I'm a proud father and not a proud father of kids, not yet, but I'm a proud father of two cats. And if you guys are lucky, they might jump uh, in front of the screen. Um, they are uh, big attention seekers, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, I live in a new build property currently in Amsterdam. I used to live in um, yeah, a building from the 80s for a couple of years, then moved to the city center of Amsterdam in a very, very old building from well before the 1800s. Um, and now finally, since 2021, was able to move into a new build property, which is um, a breath of fresh air, I have to say. Um, I'm not here by myself. I am joined here by our great partner from VZ, Andrew. Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you very much, Ludo. My name is Andrew Aziv and I work for VZ Expat Mortgages. Uh, we're a lovely team uh, working hard and focused on expats uh, specifically. Born and raised in the Netherlands, I have Egyptian roots, so that's why I have this, uh, well, beer to compensate uh, anything that's missing above. <laughs> uh, I actually bought a property in uh, 2021. Uh, it was quite a hectic period because I got married on a Monday, uh, got the keys to the property on Wednesday, and then flew onto my honeymoon. So it was quite a hectic period, but uh, was was quite nice. Um, was born and raised um, in Amsterdam, lived there. And then uh, two years ago, I moved to a small city called Permanent, a bit north from uh, from Amsterdam. And we uh, focus on expats and like to help you to get the mortgage. And we're uh, uh, happy to uh, to be present here. And I'll tell you a bit more later on about all the mortgage details to keep in mind. Thank you, Ludo. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I was. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. So hard to your story that I forgot the uh, the presentation. But there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, well, we have a we have an agenda today. What are we going to talk about? Um, first, uh, an introduction. Um, then we'll talk about some pros and cons on, on new build properties. Um, we'll give you some market information, uh, some insights on the price and costs of a new build. Then, um, yeah, a timeline and time scope of what the buying process looks like. It's a little bit different than than buying an existing build. Um, some important information like the five percent rule and the guarantee and then where to find the listings, what are the good listings. Um, and then Andrew will enlighten us with some more financial topics and mortgage information. Now, at the end of the um, uh, presentation, we'll also have some room for Q&A. Um, so if there are any questions um, that, that pop up, feel free to pop them in the Q&A. My colleague Rick is here today as well um, in, the, in the call to yeah, answer all the questions live during the webinar. If there are any unanswered questions, We'll, over, we'll go over them at the end of the presentation um, to make sure that all the questions that you guys have are answered. All right, then a um, small introduction. <clears throat> now, hopefully my presentation will, yeah, there we go. Um, small introduction on the buying team of EHN. Well, we're with a couple of people, as you can see. We have Kimo, he's from the Netherlands. Um, he's actually the founder of the company as well. Um, we have Alana, she's from Ireland, um, then myself, obviously, from the Netherlands. We have Giovanna, who's from Brazil, Rick, also from the Netherlands, and then Rafaela from Brazil as well. So a nice mix of um, Dutch speakers and, um, well, non-Dutch speakers. Um, so as you can imagine, we know what it's like to well, settle in a new country. So that is um, definitely an added value there. <clears throat> All right. Then some uh, some pros and cons on new builds. Well, let's start off with the pros, or because there are definitely a lot. Um, first of all, and something that I think is very obvious, when buying a pre-construction property, literally means pre-constructed. In other words, you can still adjust things because something that is not here yet, yeah, you can tailor a bit to your own taste. So it's really nice that if you want to have a specific kind of floor or um, even change the layout of the property, you can still do so in consultation with the developer. Um, now, nowadays, all these properties, they have very strong 
um, yeah, strong rules and regulations when it comes to the energy efficiency of the property. So um, the energy label of the property will be uh, very, very good. If it's not an A, it will be an A++. So um, yeah, that's uh, helpful because it also gives you uh, or can give you better uh, interest rates um, and that the bank will overall be happy about that as well. Now the maintenance is limited uh, when uh, same goes for when buying a new car or when buying a new table um, or buying a new TV. Things tend to stay in a good condition for at least the first couple of years. Um, same goes for property, meaning that the maintenance will be uh, limited. <clears throat> now there's no transfer tax because transfer tax is something that is applicable if they are uh, yeah, if ownership already existed, so to say. But you will become the first owner, so um, yeah, there's nothing really to transfer. Um, there is a v VAT, I'll touch base on this later, but VAT is included in the purchase price already. So uh, the transfer tax is typically 2% of the purchase price. Well, that'll save you um, quite some money to start off with. There's also no appraisal. Um, the purchase price is seen as the value by the bank. Um, an appraisal, um, to have an appraiser come by, it typically costs you between yeah, uh, 700 and 900 euros. So that's also a big cost saver as well. Now, there are some uh, cons to, to buying and, um, and moving forward with a pre-construction property. Um, and first of all, yeah, it's not possible to view the property, right? You're, you're going to buy out of a brochure, you're going to buy off pictures, and you're going to buy off a good story from the selling agent or developer. Um, now the, the reality will always be a little, little bit different than the pictures you see in the brochure. So um, you have to be aware of that as well, that it might be that the reality will be a little bit different. So... You can't really feel the property and make sure that it feels like home. Um, that is something that yeah, you'll have to experience later on when the property is actually built. Um, now, nine out of 10 times, you'll need to subscribe to a, um, a developer's website um, to be able to buy the property. Um, this correlates directly with, uh, well, <clears throat> with the fact that you um, sometimes have to enter in like a, um, yeah, how do I call it? It's not really gambling, but that you, um, well, a lottery, there you go, that, that it's like a lottery um, thing. So <clears throat> you'll have to subscribe, make sure you have to make your um, desire a present, let's say. Uh, but then nine of 10 times, it can just be a lottery where they say, well, there are hundreds of people that um, uh, want this property and we're going to take, uh, take a number out of the hat, so to say. So um that can be a little bit difficult because you can't, it's not like a first come first serve kind of thing. Um, well, when you're buying a property that has not been built yet, obviously it still needs to be built. Um, now how it works in the Netherlands is that they actually sell the properties before they are built. So um, you'll buy a property and then you'll get your financing in order. And then once everything is approved, then, um, and all the other buyers are also approved, then the property will be built. Now, this typically takes one to two years before you actually can get the keys for the property. Um, I'll touch base on this later, but there are a few complications because of this. And the main one being that you have to start paying for your mortgage, um, or at least a proportional amount from the moment that you buy the property, not from the moment that you get the keys. So um, you'll have a time period where you're paying rent or you're paying your mortgage of your current property plus the mortgage of the pre-construction property you've just bought. It's something that's important to keep in mind. Um, there's less to no negotiation on price. This yeah, can be seen as a pro or a con, but in a very competitive market where we'll have to typically overbid with pre-construction, you don't have to overbid. But in a market where it's turning a bit more into a buyer's market, yeah, it's also not possible to negotiate down on the purchase price. Um, yeah, this is what I just mentioned um, uh, in regards to the one, two years before delivery. You'll have double cost with existing housing. <clears throat> um, all right, some market information. So <clears throat> um, important to show some numbers from last quarter. Well, last quarter, what we saw was that there are um, yeah, 8,200 new built properties uh, for sale. That is 6% uh, less than um, uh, well, this time period last year. Um, <clears throat> the average house price, this actually increased. It's funny to see because compared to the um, existing built properties where it's declined a little bit, um, on new built properties, they've become more and more um, uh, popular, especially also in regards to the uh, high energy label. The average uh, house price was a little under 500,000, um, but it has increased with 8% compared to the time period last year. 
Um, <clears throat> the days to uh, sell a, a new build property has um, yeah, been 30 days. Um, this is 50% higher than apartments and 70% um, higher than houses or existing houses. So you see that it's, again, a very, very popular um, um, yeah, kind of property to purchase. Well, this um, uh, is a little bit of an outdated graph in the sense that yeah, the numbers are not yet known for even Q4 of 2022. Um, but it is uh, quite insightful because what we see is the blue line is for new builds. The red line is for existing builds. Now, in Q2 of 2022, we saw that um, yeah, the, the prices of existing builds started declining, whereas the prices of uh, existing builds actually started going up again. So um, it was the exact opposite in a time period where the gas prices started rising. Um, yeah, people really wanted to move forward to a well-isolated uh, property, which doesn't have any gas. Um, compared to an older property where you might have single glazing and all the heating, the cooking, et cetera, is done on gas. Um, so yeah, those two correlate directly. <clears throat> um, well, it might be in, uh, uh, good to know why the prices have increased. Um, and this is not just actually on uh, new builds, but also on existing builds, even though they have declined the last quarters over the last, let's say, 10 years, uh, what we saw in the previous graph, they have definitely been increasing. Um, even though, like I mentioned before, the prices have been uh, declining a little bit on an existing build, I think it is important to touch base on why the prices have um, increased over the last couple of years. A few things. First of all, there are some fiscal benefits. Um, <clears throat> there is an interest rebate in the Netherlands, meaning that when you're doing your annual income taxes at the end of the year, you can actually get back um, a percentage of the interest that you've paid on your mortgage payments. Now, it's currently around 37% of the um, interest that you've paid. Um, this might differ per year. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's definitely an attractive way to make your mortgage payments a lot cheaper. There are no capital gains in the Netherlands. So if you are going to sell your property after a couple of years and you made a nice profit on it, um, that money is going directly into your pocket. So um, um, yeah, you are not paying any taxes over the profit you, that you've made. Quite uh, quite interesting. Um, now, the low interest rates. Yeah, obviously, we've seen that over the last couple of months that has been rising, uh, but we're still at a very historically low um, interest rate. Uh, it was 1.5%, I think, one or two years ago. Um, but currently, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but we're at around 4.5%, which compared to yeah, 10, 15 years ago, or compared to uh, countries around the Netherlands, um, and especially you know outside of EU, is still a very, very low interest rate. So this, again, makes it attractive to move forward with a mortgage. Um, well, I, I said this a couple of times already, but the importance of an energy label has, has risen significantly, um, making it very attractive to move forward with a new build. Now, this is a big one as well, the high rents, um, and the expectancy is that this will just keep on rising as well. Um, the, the rents have been um, yeah, crazy high, especially in the bigger cities of the Netherlands, um, and yeah, rent is pretty much just paying off the mortgage of the landlord. So if you're planning to stay here for a longer term, um, it definitely makes sense to well, pay off your own mortgage instead of paying off someone else's. Now, this is a big one as well. Uh, the, the Netherlands has yeah, a limited amount of square meters, and we are definitely very good in using all of those square meters. Um, but at one point, yeah, there's not a lot we can build extra. So there's just a lack of supply. There are more people looking for a property compared to the amount of uh, properties available. Pretty standard economics example. Um, when the demand is higher than the supply, prices will increase. <clears throat> um, now, this is something that, that we saw happening during the COVID period as well, with um, the transport costs going up and infrastructure not being ideal. Uh, the cost of materials have risen significantly, um, making it also less um, interesting for new build um, yeah, developers to develop a new build um, uh, property or um, high rise um, because their return on investment is just going to be lower so we see that plans that were made to let's say build something next year um, they, they stalled it or actually um, canceled the whole plan just because of the you know, high costs that are paired with building such properties um, then some pricing costs that you need to keep in mind when buying a um, new build property <clears throat> so 
The good thing is when buying a new build property is that it's a yeah, all in price, a uh, free op name, free by name. <clears throat> um, so when you are looking on Funda, you might see when you're looking at an existing build that the two letters K, so KK is behind the price that you see. This means cost to coper, meaning that all the purchase costs are for the buyer. However, when buying a new build, it, you will see VON, free op name, aka the all in price meaning that actually um, the majority of the costs um, that are uh, a part of purchasing a property are within the purchase price already. So for example, the uh, transfer deed for the notary that is already included, registration in the uh, land registry and the um, research costs that are correlated with yeah, the purchase, they will all be already included in the um, uh, purchase cost. And uh, the VAT over the purchase price, including the land, will also be including in the um, uh, purchase price. So the majority is already there. But keep in mind, if you want to have, let's say, a technical inspection done, if you want to have an appraisal done at the end for your own peace of mind, um, 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 if you need, um, well, let's say, um, a mortgage deed, yeah, there we go. So. Uh, if you need a mortgage deed, then that will also be um, additional. But everything that is directly included to the purchase is in the purchase price. Now, uh, what you see on the top right, check on costs and price for extra works and finishing. That's very important because um, some new build properties, funny enough, come completely empty. So there's no kitchen, there's no flooring, there's no doors inside of the property. Sometimes there's not even an, uh, a bathroom. Now, um, I can tell you it is pretty comfortable to have a property that has a kitchen and a bathroom and a floor and doors. So that um, is something that you need to keep in mind where you'll need some more money for that. Um, now, typically you'll be able to get this from a, a mortgage perspective, um, but sometimes you'll also need to chip in some of your own funds. Um, so the purchase price that you see on Funda or on the registration website, nine out of 10 times will not be the entire amount that you're paying. Um, you can definitely count on some extra costs that will come on top of that. Um, now, an overview of um, yeah, the purchase costs that, um, uh, that you can expect or that might be additional um, are mentioned here. Now, the majority um, are actually only for existing builds. So from top to bottom, well, obviously we won't have transfer tax. That's, that's for the uh, new build. Um, the VAT on the purchase price, that's included. Registration in the land registry, that's also included. Um, now, the notary... Um, uh, uh, only the mortgage deed needs to be paid for. That's around 700 to 1300 euros. The transfer deed, luckily, again, included. Now, if you're going to work with a bank or with a mortgage advisor, um, yeah, the cost will differ between 1500 to yeah, almost 2900. Um, expert housing network, we charge a, um, uh, a fixed fee, but a typical real estate agent will charge you around 1% to 2% of the purchase price. What our fixed fee is and, and what um, Andrew's fixed fee is, we'll touch base on later on in the presentation. Now, an appraiser, again, something you won't need, uh, but if you want it for your peace of mind, yeah, typically between, the, um, yeah, I said 700 to 900, um, you have some more expensive ones that will go up to 1,000. Technical inspector, something I do advise, um, once we get all the documents from the property, one of the documents is the technical description. A huge document that yeah, writes down how the property looks like. So instead of getting pictures in that technical description, it will say property has 15 power outlets, every room 15 centimeters from the left wall. Um, kitchen will have five stove or a five pit stove, uh, we'll have a cooker um, and uh, well, it has everything written down. It can be an overwhelming amount of information. And if you, you know, don't have the expertise, um, it can be helpful to have a technical inspector read through it and give you a heads up if there are any red flags. Now, an example of a red flag would be if there's no hot water in the kitchen. Sometimes properties will come without a little boil boiler in the kitchen. Um, yeah, and then if you get the keys to your property, you want to make a cup of tea or you want to wash your hands with some warm water and there's no warm water, yeah, that can be an issue. So it's good to know what you're getting yourself into and a technical inspector can help you with that. And especially for the cost of 49 euros, my advice is just to do it. Now, for a peace of mind, you can also have a technical inspector come in after delivery um, and then they will draft up a delivery report just to give you an idea of what the property yeah, looks like now and what kind of maintenance you can expect in the coming years um, if needed is around 299 
Um, at the notary's appointment, um, you will need an interpreter if you don't master the Dutch language. Um, now, why is that the case? By Dutch law, the notary has to do the um, uh, yeah, whole appointment in Dutch or in Frisian, fun fact, but um, typically in Dutch. Um, now, unfortunately, even though I speak perfect English, and if I was your, um, if I say so myself, but if I were your a buying agent, I'm not allowed to translate the uh, contents of the uh, transfer deed and the mortgage deed. Neither can a family member or a colleague or a friend who speaks perfect English. Um, it has to be done by a professional sworn in interpreter. Um, my advice is always to do it in English. Why is that? Because the majority of the interpreters speak English. If we, if you yeah, speak a, let's say, rare language, then the cost of the interpreter might go up as well. So if you speak sufficient English, then uh, feel free to do that. <clears throat> Now, part of the uh, buying process is that you need to make a deposit, either of 10% or um, have a bank guarantee done of 10%. Now, the deposits yeah, will need to come out of own savings. So if you don't have that available, you can ask your mortgage advisor or the bank to um, organize a bank guarantee on your behalf. Um, now, this is typically 250 euros or 1% of the guaranteed amount. Um, now, the final cost that you may expect is the cost uh, to enter into the NHG. Well, first of all, what is NHG? It's the Nationale Hypothekgarantie, uh, translated to National Mortgage Guarantee. Now, this is an institution that works like an insurance company that um, um, yeah, pretty much has your back at the moment that you cannot pay um, for your um, rest debt, so to say. So... To give an example, if we buy a property for 400,000 and um, <clears throat> well, after three years, uh, for some reason you, you lose your job or you get very sick, God forbid, or anything happens and uh, you can't pay for your mortgage anymore and you need to sell your property. Um, no, you sell your property, but uh, unfortunately the value is not 400 anymore, but it went down to 350. Now, then you um, all, all of a sudden have a rest debt of 50,000 euros. Now, if you are unable to pay that, then the NHG will cover you and pay that on your behalf. Now, to enter into that um, or to make use of that insurance, you have to pay a fee of 0.6% of the mortgage amount. Um, now, there's an added value, by the way, of having NHG because you're getting an insurance and banks do love insurances. They say, well, you're getting an extra insurance. We want to, um, yeah, uh, how do you say that? Award you with that. Um, and how do they do that? With a lower interest rate. So two benefits, NHG will have your back if you have a rest debt, um, and they will give you a lower interest rate. So if you are able to make use of the NHG, definitely do so. Uh, but Andrew will be able to tell you more about that um, when you're having a consultation with him. Um, now, we have a third column with the question if it's tax deductible or not. Well, as you can see, everything that correlates with uh, money <laughs> or with mortgage is tax deductible. So that's the mortgage deed. That's the bank or a mortgage advisor consultation costs. Um, if you're having an appraisal, then the appraiser as well. And the uh, fee to enter into the NHG is also um, tax deductible. Um, all right, then payment terms. Um, how does that work? It's a little bit different than, um, again, than an existing build um, because you're going to be paying in, yeah, uh, well, you have two different kinds of terms, so to say. So uh, first of all, when buying the property and, and actually getting ownership, that is when you sign the transfer deed, no brick has been laid yet, no foundation has been laid yet, but um, yeah, that's already when you become the owner, then you're going to be paying uh, two costs, the purchase price of the land and um, the uh, purchase costs that are yeah, uh, part of the purchase fees, so to say. So what I mean with that is the cost we just saw, um, the um, well, the notary costs, the land registry costs, um, the VAT that is already included in the purchase costs, um, potentially my um, a fee already, Andrew's fees, all of these will be yeah, paid directly at that moment at the signing of the transfer deed. Um, then the rest amount, the actual amount for the uh, building of the property, that will help happen in, um, yeah, uh, uh, period of time, which is determined in the purchase contract. And um, that is pro rato to the uh, amount of property that is done, so to say. So to give an example, if 10% of the property has been built, then 10% of your uh, total mortgage payments uh, or total mortgage, monthly mortgage amount needs to be paid. So 
Um, if your mortgage payment is 1,000 euros per month, then uh, the first couple of months, if you're supposed to pay 10% of the property, you're paying 100 euros for that amount. Then at the moment that 20% of the building is done, you're going to be paying 20% of your monthly mortgage payments. All the way up to a, a moment that you're paying, let's say, 95% or 90% of the um, uh, building. And then um, uh, you will have well, your your building payments and your existing housing payments. So that's something that I mentioned before to keep a, keep an eye on because yeah, those costs can be quite significant. Um, now those terms are all mentioned in the purchase agreement. So you'll know beforehand and your mortgage advisor will also know beforehand when you need to, uh, when your payments are going to increase. Um, but all that money is going from the bank directly into a building depot at the notary and then the notary will pay out uh, accordingly. Um, all right, then the buying process. How is it going to look like? <clears throat> well, I'll show you directly the entire timeline. Um, so, well, we'll first, um, we'll start obviously on the left uh, with search and subscription. So we'll first need to find a property that um, uh, yeah, will meet your requirements, has enough square meters, has enough bedrooms, is in the right location. Um, so we'll do, we'll do the search there, and then we'll need to subscribe to the properties that um, yeah, are planned to be built. Well, um, let's say uh, we are subscribed and we get an invitation from the selling agent or from the developer um, that mentions that yeah, we are um, a potential option to move forward with. We'll have a meeting with the seller or with the um, a developer um, to yeah, get a whole description on the project. Um, that person will tell us everything on what the building will look like, what the neighborhood will look like, uh, what the timeline is. Uh, what still is possible in, in altering the layout, if it's a fixed property or if it's a co-development property where you together with the other buyers in the building um, yeah, will really have a lot of impact on what the building is going to look like. Well, you'll be able to answer, ask all your questions that you have during this meeting. So that's an that's a, a important moment. So after that meeting, we'll get a bunch of documents, um, like 20, 30 documents, with all the information that we pretty much talked about during that meeting. Um, we as a buying agent will, of course, review all these documents, make sure that they're up to expectations and are all legal and um, well, are up to the norm. Um, this is also a moment that we can potentially have our technical inspector um, review the technical description and the other technical documents. Now, if we want, uh, we'll move on to here. We'll, we can have an additional meeting with the selling agent or with the developer. Um, but if we're already convinced, then we'll let them know that we want to move forward um, and we'll receive a purchase agreement. Now, at this moment, we'll, we'll obviously also go through the purchase agreement to make sure that everything is legal and you understand everything that you're getting yourself into. Um, if everything is on green light, then we'll sign the purchase agreement and the building contract. Purchase agreement um, is pretty much uh, yeah, saying that you agree to purchase the property. Building contract is also that you're giving um, the task or giving permission to the seller and to the um, developer to start building a property. Now, they won't actually start from that moment on yet, but you have given them permission to move forward. This is also the moment that you can uh, start applying for your finances. Um, you'll do this together with your uh, mortgage advisor or with the bank. Um, <clears throat> and this typically yeah, takes around, well, uh, let's say three, four, five, six weeks um, maximum of six weeks, but I know that Andrew can do it a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, we'll receive at one point the mortgage approval here. <clears throat> now, um, we have another bullet point called the hooray letter. Um, it's a little bit um, strange maybe, but what we mean with that is that to actually, for the building to move forward with, actually, or with the developer to move forward actually with building the building, um, they need to meet certain requirements. One of them is that 70% of the entire project needs to be sold. Um, well, all the permits need to be in from the municipality. If there's ground lease, then ground lease has to be given out. Um, there are a few things that need to be met before the builder can actually move forward. Well, once all those requirements are met, then everyone receives a hooray letter, meaning that um, hooray, we can actually start moving, uh, start moving forward with the building of the project. That is also the moment that you actually become owner of the um, property that you've uh, bought. So you'll go to the notary at that moment to sign the transfer deed and potentially the mortgage deed if you're also getting a mortgage. 
um, money will go into the uh, building depot. And from there on, you have a huge time period of yeah, the building works. Now, um, that typically takes around uh, nine months plus six months um, if um, they have an additional six months if that's needed. Now, if um, everything uh, is done, then um, at the end of the yeah, building uh, process, you'll go to the property together with the developer and potentially with your technical inspector um, yeah, to have a um, delivery moment where you have a final inspection, make sure that everything works like it should, all the walls are standing where they should, uh, the outlets work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the developer also will be able to explain everything in detail about the property to you. Um, that is really when the process is finished. Of course, you still have, and I'll show that uh, in, in the next slide, I think you'll have some guarantee periods um, and, and some warranty on certain things. But that is really how the whole process will look like. Um, yeah, the guarantee there. <clears throat> so the 5% um, rule and the guarantee. Yeah, there we go, 5% rule and guarantee. How does that work? Um, well, first of all, the five percent rule. The five percent rule is a, a yeah, it's a legal right of the buyer, so everyone can make use of this uh, this legal right. Um, it's yeah, you should see it like a deposit or bank guarantee with the notary. So um, <clears throat> when you are um, making your payments to the uh, builder the, in the in the uh, fixed terms that were uh, noted in the purchase agreement. Um, at one point, you'll reach the stage stage where you're paying 90% or you already paid 90% to the builder, to the developer, um, and you still have 10% left to pay. Well, what you can do then is instead of paying that entire 10% to the um, developer, to the builder, you can actually withhold 5% and put it in the notary's account. Um, so you'll pay the 5% to the builder and the other 5% to the notary in either a deposit or a bank guarantee. Um, now, why would you do that is um, to give an incentive to the um, uh, developer or builder to not finish the last 5% or 10% very, very quickly, um, but to make sure that they um, yeah, will finish everything in perfect detail. Um, and if you know anything is not functioning correctly after the develop or the, the delivery, that you can go back to the uh, builder and say, look, you need to fix this. Um, otherwise, I won't pay out the last 5%. Um, so this is definitely something that we always advise you to do uh, because there's no harm done there. <clears throat> the only thing is um, that is uh, um, that the interest rate um, yeah, is a little bit higher on the non-payment. So uh, you do need to keep that in mind. Um, going back up a little bit, the 5% is also for common areas. So if you're buying into an apartment building, then the um, communal areas or the common areas um, yeah, have the same right, so to say. Now, if the defects are uh, present at delivery, yeah, um, don't free up the amount equal to the defects, but um, yeah, just keep the entire five percent in our opinion. Um, now, you have some guarantees and some warranties on the um, entire property. Of course, uh, there are a few that are always standard. They're just the contractual guarantees. Um, now, you have to, after three months uh, of delivery, you have the the five percent rule. That's what we just said. Um, after six months, they will do all the maintenance that needs to happen in the property due to well, defects from um, building the property. Um, up to five years, you have uh, a warranty on hidden defects. Um, now hidden defects are things that should be working, um, but are not working, and uh, things that the um, developer and the selling agent should have been aware of. Um, and even up to 20 years, um, the, the builder will be um, uh, yeah, uh, liable for any major defects like uh, foundations that are going down, um, structural cracks, um, roof um, or balcony defects, things like that. Um, now, something nice, you can actually get some extra coverage. And um, the, the good thing is, is that the majority of the new build projects and developers um, have this uh, automatically is that they're working with um, yeah, extra coverage companies called Boningborg, SVK or Baugerand. Um, these are like insurance companies that will offer you extra coverage. Now, on top of the um, warranties I just mentioned, they will give you an additional three months after delivery. Um, <clears throat> they will give you some uh, six years of guarantee for maintenance. 
and there are specific uh, parts um, that depends on the, the property uh, that will have um, a little bit of a shorter guarantee period, but the majority will give you extra, extra guarantee and major defects, again, also 10 years on top of the what we just mentioned. So pretty interesting. Okay, well, we just talked about new builds um, uh, for a long time, but um, it's quite important to know where we're actually going to find these listings, right? Um, well, we have, um, I think it's it's very well organized in in, a, in that sense in the Netherlands, as we have funda.nl for pretty much all the existing builds. We also have a website called nieuwbouw-nederland.nl, um, where you can find all the new build um, the projects that, that are coming online in the future. Um, it will be listed on that website. Um, now, it's, it also says city website. Have a look on your munis uh, municipal uh, or the website of the municipality to see if there are any um, uh, yeah, new build projects uh, listed because the municipal municipality will nine out of 10 times also mention um, if there are only any projects that will come up in the future. And so it's also for their in, um, greater interest to yeah, offer housing, so to say. Uh, now, also project websites. Now, where are you going to find project websites? Obviously, you'll need to uh, stumble on them, for example, on the Nieuwbouw-Nederland uh, website. But for example, the project that I'm living in is part of a much bigger project. So there's this huge um, neighborhood that they just built, and the there's one developer that yeah, built the entire neighborhood. Um, so I was interested in another property, actually, to start off with, um, but that was sold out already. But at that moment, I was already subscribed to the entire project website. And when the, once they started selling um, properties in this building, yeah, I was already high on the list. So um, um, I was already, yeah, let's say, uh, first in line on this project website. So definitely um, important to keep those entire websites um, online so to say um now funda i already mentioned it on uh, existing builds but it's actually also a very good source for new build properties um sometimes it's a little bit later than newbau dash nederland but um it will still have the majority of the properties uh, or new build properties mentioned on there as well now the last one a big one as well is the network of your buying manager um we obviously know the majority of the um, buying and selling agents in um, the regions that we work and um, the developers will yeah, work with certain selling agents. Those selling agents will, before it's even listed on any website, will be uh, reaching out to us to make sure that we're already aware of the new build um, uh, projects coming up. So um, yeah, if you're then working with that buying manager, you'll be able to get that information a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, small disclaimer, obviously, is that the subscription conditions differ per project, so um, it, it might be that um, you'll be entering into a lottery anyway. <clears throat> um, all right, Andrew, can you give us some insight on the financial topics and mortgage information? Sure, happy to do that. Thank you, Ludo. Uh, I think Ludo already mentioned there are some uh, differences when you look at the, the cost when you buy a new construction in comparison to the existing houses. Well, focusing on new construction, you can see well, op nam means that it's an all-in price, so there's no transfer tax applicable. So normally the transfer tax is 2% uh, if you buy something above the 440 uh, and exceed the 35 years. Um, but even if you buy new construction for 1 million, there isn't any transfer tax to be paid. And it's quite easy, the market value of that new construction project is determined by what you actually pay for it. With existing houses, it works a bit different. There are some purchase costs, so one of them could be the transfer tax, uh, but you also have to evaluate the property, which is normally not the case with new uh, construction. And you also uh, pay a bit more for the uh, property deed, which is normally already included in the all-in fee for new construction. And with existing houses, the market the value is actually determined by the valuation report that needs to be done, which costs around the seven to 900 euros. So these are the main uh, differences. If you look at, uh, let's say the one-time fees, the startup fees, when you buy either one of those. If we go uh, to the next slide, um, well, maybe just to give you a bit of an uh, easy example, let's say buy something for 500K, let's start on the left, existing property, 500k there's transfer tax of two percent 
uh, some notary cost evaluation report. You can see our fee and the fee for our expert housing network. Well, you can see that the total cost would be 518,700, let's say 519,000. You can only borrow the actual market value of the property. So assuming that's 500K, so that means that the difference between the two is roughly the 19,000 that you have to put in. With new builds, um, going to the right, you have 500K, there's no transfer tax. Uh, you have a part of the notary cost, normally no valuation, and then our fees are applicable again. And then you can see that the total cost would be uh, around the 7,000 euro, uh, if you compare it to 19,000 euro uh, when you buy something uh, which is a existing property. Quite easy. Well, existing property is determined by the valuation report, how much is actually worth and how much you could borrow. A very important thing with new construction is that it normally split the purchase price in two amounts, the cost for the ground and the cost for the construction. Um, but bear in mind that normally this might be quite basic. It might be that you want to ha add certain things. Make it might be that you have a basic kitchen that you have to pay a bit more to have that at the level that you'd like it to be. And there aren't any floors, uh, for example, put in. Sometimes they don't even put in the kitchen, so you already have to uh, keep that in mind. Um, why is this very important? Because normally what we see in practice is that on top of the purchase price, people need, let's say, 5 to 10% uh, to, well, let's say, finish it up uh, exactly the way they like it. And this can be financed in full if your income lets you. Uh, and you can actually have to fill in a form called the home improvement specification form in which you specify what you're going to do and for how much. And if your income lets you, you can actually finance that in full. So always make sure if you have a new construction uh, property in mind, uh, make sure to dig in uh, to the whole uh, situation. What is actually included? Um, uh, is there already a kitchen or a bathroom in it? Is it already at the level of your liking? Just to be sure to know, okay, what is any additional work that you'd like to do to get that at your, uh, well, certain level. And normally we give as a rule of thumb, five to 10% is on top of the regular purchase price. A very important thing looking at, uh, well, actually from a mortgage perspective as, uh, well, your future mortgage advisor, a few things to keep in mind, you actually start paying for the mortgage as soon as the construction starts. So Lud already mentioned that normally if 10% uh, has already been paid, then you will, you start at 100 euros heading towards the thousand euros of monthly payment. But that's very important for your own financial situation to be aware of because, well, you already start from the uh, moment that the first brick uh, is laid, uh, meaning that uh, you'll have double housing costs. You'll have your current rent or current mortgage, and of course your future mortgage, which starts at a lower level and then increases to 100% as soon as you get the keys to the property. Normally they do start already at a bit of a higher level because the ground you normally pay directly. So that could already be that you start at 50% of your monthly payment and then go up to the 100%. Since you don't exactly know at which moment, which phase of the construction um, is actually hit or met, let's say, we always advise our clients to assume that 80% of the well regular gross monthly payment will be paid during the construction period. So you have to be aware of the fact that you can either save significantly less or you have uh, your savings account, um, a lot of money withdrawn from that, for example, to, uh, well, bridge that period till the new construction period is over. Uh, so that's a very important thing to keep in mind because that could easily take up to two years. I've even had projects that took up to three years. So a very important uh, thing to keep that in mind. A few important things which are quite different than if you look at existing properties, it might be that if the construction already started, that you have to pay something called construction interest. It means that the constructor already started, uh, well, uh, working on the project, so they already paid certain amounts in advance. And it might be that you have to pay this interest, which can also be included in the mortgage. A few important dates to keep in mind, you normally have a legal cooling off period of one week after you sign the purchase agreement, which is a bit longer than if you look at existing properties. And the financial clause is normally set uh, for two months. So after you've signed, you, we have two months to arrange the mortgage. 
Normally the mortgage can easily be arranged within a week or two, three at maximum, but it's always nice to have a bit of a buffer. But we can see, well, normally see that the financial clause is two months for most of the projects. Um, and the most important date in this purchase agreement are, is the date for the suspensive uh, condition. And these suspensive conditions are very important because they actually determine when they actually are going to start with the construction. So for example, they say, okay, if there's an environmental permit um, uh, arranged and a minimum of 70% of the properties have been sold, then we're going to start uh, building. Uh, why is this important? Because you also need to have a mortgage offer, which is long enough to bridge that gap of six to nine months. And normally we see that's around the nine months, uh, but it really depends on the project. Um, but it means that we have to apply for a mortgage or with a mortgage provider where the offer validity is, well, longer than those nine months. This is very important. Sometimes you can also extend the offer, uh, but it could be that you have to pay extension costs, which could easily exceed the thousand euro per month of extension which is quite significant, of course, and it's already quite an expensive process for you to buy a property. So that's always something that we keep in mind when we compare the mortgage providers so that we can choose something that suits you the best. Of course, you can always make your own estimations online. Um, you can always do that, but uh, of course, always better to have a bit more of an accurate calculation. Um, you can always schedule a telephonic appointment, even a video call. Uh, with one of our mortgage advisors uh, so we can uh, well help you with everything um, it's uh, free of charge we just walk through the situation see how much you earn how much you could borrow uh, what the monthly payments will be because of course that's also an important thing no, don't look at how much you could borrow but what you're willing to pay i will also share uh, the link uh, with you uh, so you can uh, schedule that appointment and um, well we're happy to uh, help you to arrange the mortgage together with expert housing network Yes, indeed. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks very much, uh, Andrew. Always very, very insightful. Um, cool. So some final tips or a small um, um, a summarization of what um, we talked about. So check on double cost, extra works timing. Um, check that with your uh, buying manager, but also check that with your mortgage advisor. Um, consider a technical review of the documents. Better to be safe than sorry. Um, always good to check if there's a guarantee from a, a builder, either the SKKW, Boningborg, or the Bauverland. Um, Well, it's good to uh, calculate some extra works, uh, which will be added on the purchase price. Now, as Andrew mentioned, sometimes you can actually add that to your purchase or to the mortgage amount. So um, again, check this with your mortgage advisor as well. And um, might be handy to consider a technical ins uh, inspection for the delivery or right after the delivery. <clears throat> Um, all right, then our costs. Well, the costs from uh, Expert Housing Network's perspective. Um, we uh, yeah, offer a new build package. Now, how that works is obviously you'll have a, a personal intake. We'll talk about your personal situation, what you're looking for, get your search criteria, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you'll get access to a buying consultant. Uh, together with your buying consultant, we will do search. We will attend the uh, meeting with the selling agent or with the developer. We'll review all the documents that we receive, including the purchase agreement uh, and such. We'll uh, go through all the checklists, the point of attention that are sent by the uh, selling agent and developer. We'll do a price benchmark. Now, why price benchmark? Um, <clears throat> even though you'll get the full uh, purchase price from a mortgage, um, you don't want to yeah, then sell your property after five years and uh, find out that you bought it for far too expensive. So it's good to know that the price that is being asked by the selling agent and developer is in line with the market value. We'll do an offer negotiation if possible. Then, like I mentioned, we'll review the contract, the transfer deed, and the um, uh, mortgage deed. Um, yeah, we'll be there for the full pre-transfer support to answer any questions that you might have um, and we'll pretty much hold your hand throughout the whole process. And then we'll assist in booking the experts if you would like to have the experts there. So the technical inspector, if you want an appraiser, will book the, the uh, notary if the notary is not known yet, um, that kind of things. Well, the our price, it's a fixed fee of 3,450 euros. This is including VAT. Um, so um, yeah, what you see is what you get. And we ask a, um, a deposit payment of 499. 
And that is just to kick things off. Obviously, well, this will be subtracted from the 3,450 at the end. Um, now, the deposit is non-refundable. The rest is no cure, no pay. Easy as that. <laughs> now, Andrew, how about your costs? Thank you, Ludo. Um, if you're a first time buyer, uh, we have a fixed fee for the whole process, which is 2,895. We anyhow only work with fixed fees because we'd like to be transparent. And our fee is also tax deductible. And well, why VZ? We're completely independent, so it doesn't really matter which mortgage provider we're going to arrange the mortgage with, but we really like to choose something that suits you the best. Uh, we can choose out of more than 30 mortgage providers, of course, depending on your personal situation. Uh, if you're an expat, uh, we cannot arrange it with all of them. So that's really something where we come in. The fee includes uh, also arranging a life insurance or a disability insurance, very important to look into, especially if you're buying together. Uh, and we also have our internal acceptance team. So we have our own department already checking all the documents before we send it to the mortgage provider. Um, well, they're called smooth operations for a reason. Uh, so we can make sure that everything runs smoothly and that we have a, a final mortgage offer as soon as possible. And due to that, a lot of mortgage providers have given us also priority lanes saying that, well, if VZ applies for a mortgage, then we'll give you quicker processing times than any of your competitors. So we'll make sure to find the best mortgage for you and help you throughout the whole process. Um, all right, then let's move on with the Q&A. Um, I see that my colleague Rick has already answered a bunch of questions um, during the webinar. Um, now, if you guys have any questions still or anything that is unclear, feel, feel free to uh, well, pop it in the Q&A now. Yes, I see a question from Olivier or Oliver, um, <laughs> unless they're Dutch, of course. Is it very common for new bills to increase in value as soon as they are ready? Um, well, I will take uh, I'll take this one. Um, yes, this is this is quite common. And why is that? It's because um, well, major reason is that the trend in the market is typically that it increases over time. Um, it doesn't even matter if it's it's ready or not. Let's say. Uh, but as uh, the moment that you purchase the property, for example, is, is 400,000 today, in two years, the market will have increased also for existing builds, for other new builds that have just been finished uh, for the entire housing market. So the value of the property will increase anyway. Um, because of this, there are also a bunch of uh, rules and regulations now that make it very unattractive or sometimes even impossible for investors to just buy a um, new build property and then sell it again from the moment that it's finished. Because you can imagine that, especially in the past, what happened is um, investors, they buy it now for the 400,000 um, and they don't ever live in it. They just have the property built. And from the moment that they get the keys, they put it online again and sell it for 420, 430 or sometimes even higher. Um, there are uh, per municipality different rules, but uh, almost every bigger city municipality has a rule now that you have to live in your new build property for X amount of years before you can actually sell it. So um, <clears throat> that that helps in that process. But typically, yes, if you buy it now, the value once it's done is going to be higher, um, especially if you decide to put in a nicer kitchen, nicer bathroom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Rick, would you like to take over? <laughs> Yes, yes, I saw you already. I took the first one. Um, another question for you, Ludo. In what areas in the Netherlands uh, does EHN work? You're on mute. I, um, <laughs> I muted myself again. Too quick with those buttons. Uh, fair question. Um, well, EHN actually works in the majority of the Netherlands. Um, we have the luck that the Netherlands isn't that big. Um, and uh, well, you are lucky that we have offices in multiple um, uh, cities, actually. So we operate in the um, yeah, bigger cities for sure. Um, obviously, Amsterdam, but also Den Haag, Rotterdam, Groningen and Eindhoven. Um, but we also operate well now actually also in Maastricht. The smaller cities, of course, like Haarlem, um, Utrecht, um, well, Zaandam, Amstelveen will also uh, operate. Um, and we do have colleagues actually living in the, the smaller parts of the Netherlands as well. So typically we'll, we will be able to help you out in every part of the Netherlands. It's only if we are looking at, let's say, the smaller islands of the Netherlands, like Tessel, Terschelling, where I say, well, that's, that's really not where my expertise is. Uh, but even then, I, I like a challenge, so I'd definitely like to help you out. But uh, well, the rest of the Netherlands will, will be able to help you out. Thank you. Uh, another question for you, 
uh, what happens if the delivery date gets postponed? Um, yeah, fair question. We do see that happening a lot, actually. Um, in the purchase agreement, there are a bunch of um, yeah things mentioned on that. Uh, I first wanted to say rules. I wouldn't necessarily call them rules, but there are um, uh, yeah boundaries for that. So. Um, first of all, there's the max amount of days that a, um, a developer or builder can, can take to build the property. Um, and then there are also fines on certain delays. First, I think like, let's say 25 days is penalty free. Then, um, they, they start with small penalties and, and go up to quite significant penalties. Um, but all of these differ per project, but will be mentioned in the purchase agreement. Thank you. Andrew, question for you. Um, if an expat has to leave the country for some reason, what happens if the property cannot be sold? Um, we don't see this a lot, to be honest, but normally what happens is that you just have to uh, pay the mortgage till the moment that you can sell the property. Um, some people might switch it to an investment mortgage to be able to rent it out. And that's also something that we can help you with. Uh, but the question is whether it will be interested to to, uh, to keep the property because the government is coming up with a lot of rules to make this less interesting. Thank you. Uh, a little another question for you. I don't know if you can answer it. I think uh, it's a broad answer, but how much does it cost to uh, demolish a house and, and build a new one? Yeah, yeah, it's um, a question we get sometimes, but it's a question that is very, very difficult to answer. Um, first of all, what is good to know is that the uh, if there is you know, a, a, um, already a property on the ground um, or a building or a, um, a factory or whatever it is that needs to be demolished, then the cost for that are typically for the developer um, or the builder. So it's part, it's included in your purchase price, so to say. So you won't necessarily have to do that yourself. Now, if you are going to start a project like that yourself without a, a builder, developer, a selling agent, whatever, and you just are building a plot of land with yeah, a building on it already, you want to demolish it and build yourself something new. This depends on too many variables that I can give an answer on it. But kind of if it's a factory which has a lot of asbestos in it, it can be very, very expensive to demolish it and take it down. If it's just a shed of, of five meters by five meters, yeah, um, it could be very cheap. You can maybe do, even do it yourself. So it's it ranges from very expensive to very cheap. Um, but if it's for a, a building of a new build project that you're buying from a, a new build uh, catalog, let's say, then these costs will be included in the purchase price already. Thank you. Uh, then Amila is looking uh, at well, for something in Dronte, Lelystad, in the Flevoland area. Do you have a footprint there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we uh, we help a lot of our clients buy um, new build properties there and existing builds. Um, it seems like it's far away from Amsterdam, but it's it's really not that far. We see a lot of people that want to yeah, purchase in in Amsterdam, for example, but want a little bit more square meters. They move to areas like uh, Dronte, Lelystad, Almere. Um, so that that makes sense, and we help out there a lot as well. And we know the majority of the agents there. Thank you. Um... Then could a purchase contract be cancelled during the construction period? What would be the clauses uh, or fees to do that? Well, um, <clears throat> so the, the easy answer is yes, anything is possible, but there are then indeed uh, fees, penalties, um, etc. attached to it. Um, luckily, the construction only starts from the moment that pretty much everything has been settled already, right? The co constructor has met all his requirements. You have your financing in order already. You've signed the transfer deed. Um, so typically, or technically speaking, you are already the owner. So um, the the cancelling of the um, a construction, how, how it would then work is sell the project while you while the project is being um, uh, built so to say so you once you are yeah, the owner of the property you can't go to the constructor and say you know what never mind you don't really have to buy you have to build my um, uh, property anymore um, what you would then do is sell the property or sell part of the construction that you're that is going on then all right thank you then i think the last question refers to the situation andrew was talking about Investment wise, which is a better uh, choice in terms of return on investment, depending on the location, of course. So 
about selling or yeah. renting. Yeah, that's um, um, also a difficult one to answer because it also depends a little bit on what you're going to do with your property. If you're buying an existing build, which is not in such a good state, but you're going to renovate it completely and um, yeah, make an extension, add another floor on top, et cetera, et cetera, then the in, uh, return on investment might be bigger on an existing build. Um, keep in mind, the new builds, they're already a little bit more on the expensive side, as we saw on the uh, on one of the slides, what the average house price was, and that that has increased as well. Um, just because everything is, you know, a top notch, let's say. Um, so the margins might be a little bit smaller. However, in a market where people are more and more interested in newer properties, um, the purchase price when you're selling might also be a little bit higher. So depends on a lot of factors. As you mentioned, um, also the location is a big one. Um, so it depends a little bit on what you're going to do with the property. Um, so yeah, I, I can't uh, pick pick one or the other, to be honest. Depends on the property. All right, that's it for now. Perfect. Oh, All right. Well, thanks very much, guys, for uh, for joining today. Uh, thank you, Rick, for um, uh, being our powerful powerful man always to answer the questions in the Q&A. Thank you very much, Andrew, for being our trusted partner when it comes to the financing and mortgage. And thanks to, to our audience today and to the attendees to, to be here and um, well, listen to our very interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for joining. Yes, right. thank you. Have Thanks a wonderful day, guys, and hope to speak to you guys soon.